This is my video for the two-gun action challenge match held October 16th, 2021 at the Pima Pistol Club. From this first position, the shooter has to get three hits on the left target, two hits on the right target, then back and one hit on the left target. I'm using an OD Green KP-15 with recluse trigger, 16-inch ballistic advantage barrel, and Vortex Spark Solar with micro magnifier. From this position, it's three hits on the right target, two hits on the left target, then one hit on the right target. I reload on the move because there's a spinner at the last position. I am using the magnifier for these targets because the gray steel is blending into the shadows and the lighting conditions makes them difficult to see. From this last position, it's three hits on the left target, two hits on the right target, one hit on the left target, then rotate the spinner. Even with the magnification, the dust signature and the spinner's movement through this poor lighting here makes it difficult to see. I'm first armored and first overall on this stage. On this stage, the shooter has to get one hit on the steel from the cone, move to the VTAC, get one hit from the first three ports, then move back to the cone, and this process will repeat until they've gone through all nine ports on the VTAC. For these sideways ports, I'm holding my upper body up with my support hand, and I'm basically resting the gun on the light to allow the slide to cycle through each port. For the bottom ports, I go strong side shoulder down, and I start on the right side so I can kind of push myself along to each subsequent port. I'm second armored and 12th overall in the stage. On a simple stage like this, you can see how much closer the results are clustered together. It's also interesting to note that the first place armored shooter was 10th on this stage. What this tells me is that the bottom ports were a more difficult shooting problem for people wearing armor than those who were not. On this first iteration, the shooter has to get four hits on the left target and three hits on the right. The rifle is then put on safe, facing into the side berm, and the shooter has to run down range and knock two plates off of the double whirly gig. There are eight plates total. This process is going to repeat back and forth until all the plates are knocked off of the double whirly gig at the end. Three, two, three, two. On this iteration, there are three hits on the left target and two hits on the right target. I take out the remaining two plates on the top whirly gig. This allows the other one to bottom out and will be moving less by the time I get back there. Two, one. As the RO calls out, there are two hits required on the left target and one hit required on the right target. I'll make a note that for this stage, I was not using the magnifier at all. The targets are sufficiently contrasted and they're only 50 yards away. Note I slow down as I get into position, acquire the pistol, get a good sight picture, then send the shots. Missing multiple times on these targets is where many competitors added time to their score. The stage required all shots passed between the barrels and the rifle was abandoned on the ground. That's why I prone out for even this last shot. The same stage, if the rifle could have been staged on the barrel facing into the berm and the shots being fired standing, would be dramatically faster. I'm first armored and second overall on this stage. On this stage, the shooter has to get one hit on a full-size Ipsic at 50 yards of their pistol, then run over here and get three hits on each of the rifle targets with their rifle. This process is going to repeat back and forth eight times. Missing with the pistol is what cost most people on this stage. There is a 180-second par time, and a lot of people timed out on it. As I acquire the rifle, I'm going to shoot the target that it was last oriented to. So when I come back the next time, I'm going to start on the left target, then move to the right target. These little bits of efficiency help shave seconds off the time overall. Three. 
Notice the difference in my cadence of shots on the large target versus the small target. The small target, I have to let the sight settle just that much more before sending the next shot. The pistol is definitely the hardest part of the stage. It's particularly the further into it you get, the harder it becomes to stabilize and send the shot. I reload before the sequence so I don't shoot empty. I'm positioned slightly off to the left so I send a couple extra shots to make all three hits. Using the bipod definitely makes the rifle faster to acquire and easier to make the hits. To make sure it didn't tip over on me when abandoning it, I tightened down the swivel feature so it had less range of motion. That's good news because I am getting pretty tired at this point. Looking at the length of the video versus what was recorded for score, I think the clock may not have picked up my last shots fired. Based on the video, I should be at 133 seconds. I'm still in first place in armored and first place overall. It just narrows the margin a bit. In the end, I'm first out of eight shooters in armor division and first out of 36 shooters overall. If we add in those extra 28 seconds from the last stage with the clock error, I'd still be first in both armored and overall. Thank you for watching. Come back again for more match and multi gun competition content. Go ahead and get behind the gun. Pull the loading tab through the fork. Loads right to left. So loading wise, it's lefty friendly. Just pull it through until it stops. Okay. Okay. Now run the charging handle twice. Do it again. You are hot. Okay. Tell me when you are ready. Stand by. One, two, three. One, two. Move. Over. 88.31 to unload. Open this. Is it wrong? You got it. It's just, it's just tough. Hold on. Pull the belt. Run the action. Twice. Dry fire. Let's close it. Dry fire. You're safe. <laughs>